Howdy guys, today we're gonna watch decolonization in the Americas. It's gonna be really interesting. Let's see if something out uh, gets out of my mouth. Let's watch. All right, let's start guys. We begin in 1763. The entire American continent is dominated by the European colonial powers. Spain has a very large territory. In the south, the Portuguese control Brazil. On the Central American islands, mainly France and Great Britain, develop huge sugarcane and coffee plantations by importing slaves from Africa. Yeah. Finally, the North is largely under the control of Great Britain after its victory in the Seven Years' War. The British dominate all their rivals, notably thanks to the powerful... America, Army. baby, come on. But the war has taken its toll on the country's finances, and to replenish its coffers, it imposes new taxes on its colonies. Thirteen of them are opposed to this, and tensions rise, finally provoking yeah. the American Revolutionary War. France, Spain, and the United Provinces take advantage of the situation to ally themselves with the independence <laughs> fight. Wow, they really hated Britain, right? I mean, they all supported the rebels. Wow, they really must have hated the UK. ...in order to weaken Great Britain. Finally, the British are defeated and forced to recognize the independence of the United States of America, which is the first European colony to become independent. From the very first years, the United States colonists have been extending their possessions westward to the manifest that of the destiny, bro. Populations, which provokes numerous internal wars. Haiti. Wow. Yeah. In good. France, we don't hear a lot about Haiti. War and the American Revolutionary That's War, nice. The economic situation is catastrophic which contributes to the outbreak of the French Revolution. Yes, sir. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen is proclaimed. It's, it's crazy to really think how the French Revolution and later the Napoleon and the Napoleonic Wars would really affect this side of the world, this hemisphere, and particularly the continent. I mean, it's huge. It's massive. By the way, guys, I have a channel in Spanish. So if any of you speak Spanish, you know, please go subscribe. Or even if you don't speak Spanish, man, you can subscribe, right? States that I would really appreciate are born it. And remain free and equal in rights. In the rich colony of San Domingue, San Domingue. These words provoke a slave and freedman revolt against the great landlords, also called the planters. Spain and Great Britain join forces to fight the insurgents, but the insurgents win and occupy wow. the whole island. Napoleon Bonaparte, who has seized power in France, understands that it would be difficult to reassert his sovereignty over his distant territories. He sends an army to San Domingue and decides to sell Louisiana, which he secretly obtained from Spain three years earlier, to the United States. In San Domingue, the French soldiers, weakened by disease, are defeated. On January 1st, 1804, the independence of Haiti is proclaimed. Nice. It's the only republic born from a revolution of slaves and freedmen. In Europe, the United Kingdom inflicts a heavy defeat on the Spanish and French fleets at the Battle of Trafalgar. Could we say that maybe Admiral Nelson was the best sea commander? I don't know. I don't know what's the term. But yeah, that was a really epic battle. Country confirms its domination of the seas. But Napoleon, who dominates Europe, opts for economic warfare and imposes a continental blockade. The United Kingdom, in the midst of the Industrial Revolution, absolutely needs to find new markets to sell its goods. Taking advantage of the decline of Spain, it turns to America, but Spain officially prohibited trade with the British. The United Kingdom attempts two military incursions into the vice royalty of the Rio de la Plata. Argentina, Argentina, Creoles, baby. The descendants of Spanish settlers born in America. In Spain, King Charles IV and his son Ferdinand VII are quarreling over the throne. Napoleon takes advantage of this and places his brother Joseph at the head of the country. This is not accepted in the Spanish colonies, where juntas, which means local governments favorable to King Ferdinand VII, are organized. Conflicts appear everywhere. 
In New Spain, the priest Miguel Hidalgo calls on the people to rise up. Independence movements now. Yeah, you learn about this in school. Uh, first of all, that uh, Napoleon's brother was in the Spanish throne, which was a big mess, and all of the Spanish colonies didn't accept that. That's a big, uh, important role in school. And also, he mentioned something that's exclusively Mexican. The priest Miguel Hidalgo, he's sort of considered the the, in, the the father of Mexico, or I don't know what would be the term, but if we had to translate, it would be like sort of the father of Mexico, or the, which is weird because he didn't really create it in Mexico. He got killed because of revolting, and he never really saw the creation of Mexico, but still appear secretly supported by the British and motivated by revolutionary yeah, Masonic lodges. That, that vengeance from Britain. After the abdication of Napoleon, Ferdinand VII recovers the Spanish Look at throne and they are, quickly bro. sends reinforcements to America to regain control. Paraguay manages to resist, as well as the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata, which proclaims its independence. Ooh, independences. Come on. In January 1817, the separatists San Martin and O'Higgins cross the Andes from the east with an army and seize Santiago. O'Higgins is appointed supreme director and proclaims Chile. What? Usually what, you know, Mexico is a little bit secluded from this part of history because... When you look at this, you know, San Martin is the, again, the father of independence of Argentina, uh, Chile, kind of, uh, also with Bernardo Higgins, uh, and Peru, and then Simon Bolivar, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, a lot of countries. So in, in Mexico, we're sort of secluded, like, of that part of history. In independence, in the north. Another independence army, led by Simon Bolivar and reinforced by the British Legion, leaves Angostura. Great guy, great military leader. And defeats the Spaniards at the gates of Santa Fe de Bogota. Bolivar then proclaims the independence of Gran Colombia, Gran Colombia, of which he becomes president, although he doesn't yet control the entire territory. In reaction, Ferdinand VII raises a new army, but the latter revolts and refuses to leave Cadiz. Taking advantage of the situation, San Martin lands in Peru, seizes Lima, and proclaims the country's independence, although the Amazonian territory is still controlled by the royalists. In New Spain, after 11 years of war, the independents win and proclaim the Mexican Empire. Oh no, look at that. The nostalgia, bro. That's so fucking big. <sighs> One minute of silence for the former Mexican Empire. We were a great country for like two years and then everyone just <laughs> went to shit. Fire. In the south, Quito is liberated by the independence armies. Bolivar and San Martin then meet in Guayaquil. Nobody knows what they say to each other, but San Martin gives up part of his army to Bolivar and then discreetly withdraws. In Brazil, the Portuguese royal family Let's not forget about Brazil. have been installed in Rio de Janeiro since the invasion yeah. of Portugal by Napoleon. Despite the liber I read about this basically story goes and it might be a little bit different but story goes the Portuguese royal family were so happy in Brazil that they didn't really want to go back to Portugal you know uh, so they were really enjoying that Brazil life you know the weather the people you know they were enjoying it and they didn't want to go that's what I know but there might be another reason why they didn't want to leave Liberation of the country in 1811, the royal family decided to stay in Brazil. However, the difficult political situation in Portugal forces King John VI to return to the country in a hurry. But his heir, son Peter, who remained in Brazil, now enters into conflict with the Portuguese government and proclaims the independence of Brazil, of which he becomes emperor. In Central America, Mexico struggles to consolidate. The South secedes, go. and the United Provinces of Central America is proclaimed. 
Throughout the continent, instability is great, which worries the United States. James Monroe. President James Monroe then declares to the Europeans that the United States would no longer accept new attempts at colonization on the American continent. You know, honestly, it's it's great. You know, in Latin America, we have a lot of problems, but international war is not one of them. And at least here living in Mexico, we sort of feel very protected by the U.S. It's kind of like when you are a friend of the school bully, you know, you know nobody's going to mess around with you. That's how I feel, really. Not, not to say that America is a bully or anything, but, you know, it's the strongest country out there, so... If imagine if like China invaded Mexico, do you think the U.S. would be involved? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's it's very safe here. I mean, we have a lot of issues. International war, no one of them. Give me a like for that. <laughs> South, the last royalist pockets are defeated by the army of General Sucre. Bolivia is created, named after Simon named Bolivar. After Simon the latter Bolivar. now oh. dreams of uniting all the American republics under a great common authority. But internal divisions caused this project to fail. In the south of the continent, a war breaks out between Alrighty. the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata and Brazil for the control of the Cisplatine province. Brazil imposes a commercial blockade on the ports of Buenos Aires and Montevideo, but its armies fail to prevail on land. Unable to neutralize each other and financially exhausted, both appeal to the United Kingdom for arbitration. The British, during the peace treaty, obtain the creation of Uruguay as a buffer state. The United Kingdom, by becoming the guarantor of stability in the region, protects its commercial interests. At the end of 1829, Venezuela secedes from Gran Colombia. Bolivar, whose health is deteriorating, fails to find a solution and resigns. Gran Colombia breaks up and immediately conflicts arise over the delimitation of the new borders. In Mexico, after the abolition of oh, slavery, great. the United States colonists, who are in the majority in Texas, rebel. A civil war breaks out and leads to the proclamation of independence of the Republic of Texas, recognized by the United States. In the United Provinces of Central America, unity no is comments. also undermined, and the five states that make it up declare independence. Finally, in Haiti, the Dominican Republic, which has been occupied since 1822, also obtains its independence. North America, oh God. In 1845, the United States, which wants to expand westward, annexes Texas. But a border disagreement with Mexico provokes a war. At the same time, the British and the United States agree on... The Mexican-American War. Oh man, what, what, can you, what can be said about that war? You know, it was pretty bad for us. Really bad. Our worst ever defeat i mean not to, not to say that we had a lot of international wars but it was really bad i don't know i don't know why the people on 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 the government at the time thought that was going to be a good idea of course the the us wasn't like the, the the global superpower that we know today but it still had a better army uh and not only that like you had the the colonists in texas that weren't really going to just sit down and take it so, yeah, you know, too bad, especially because this happened uh, just a little before the, the, the gold rush in California. So, you know, just imagine what could have happened if we had that gold, man, you know, gosh, who knows? Sharing the Oregon country that was joint controlled in 1848 after the victory of the United States, Mexico is no. forced to recognize the annexation of Texas and gives up a huge territory. Fair, In California, fair game, bro. The discovery of gold causes a rush that attracts people from all over the world, including Asia. In the far north of the continent, the Russian Empire, in fear of losing Alaska to their rival, the British, chooses to sell its territory to the United States. In the same year, the United Kingdom authorizes the union of three provinces in the north to ensure their protection from the United States, which seems to want to expand. They form the Dominion of Canada. Which Canada, bro, also overlooked. will, over the next years, integrate the neighboring British colonies. 
Bro, America was on full-on expansionist mode. Due to border disputes, Paraguay has been at war for two years <laughs> yeah. with the triple I know alliance of Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay. In what? 18... Why, bro? Why? Why would you do that? Why would... Same thing. Imagine being a little Paraguay fighting with Argentina, Uruguay, and fucking Brazil. Who thought that was going to be a good idea? And I did a whole essay back in school about this war. And it was devastating, truly devastating by, by Paraguay. The population, like, they lost so many men. You would listen to stories about how po Poland lost a lot of men, right, age uh, 20, 30 years old. Paraguay was hardcore. There were three women for every man out there. So it was brutal. It was a brutal war for the country. Paraguay wouldn't really recover for over 100 years, really, from that war. Let me, let me uh, show you a little video. Here it is. You know, this is uh, the, the, the War of the Triple Alliance explained by Tom and Jerry. Yep. And the British were also involved, so yeah. 70. Either way, Paraguay you wouldn't want to be Paraguay. Whereupon a large part of its territory is amputated, leaving a deeply devastated country. Further west, tensions also rise between Chile oh, and Bolivia this one was also over really a territory bad. rich in mineral deposits. When Bolivia increases taxes on Chilean companies present in the region, Chile decides to occupy the port of Antofagasta to control Antofagasta, exports. Yeah. War breaks out involving Peru, which is allied with Bolivia. Chile quickly wins. And if you ever wondered why Chile had the shape that it has, this is why. extends its territory to the north, cutting off Bolivia's access to the ocean. Sad Bolivia. At the same time, in the south. The Mapuches, who had resisted the Incan and Spanish invasions, are now invaded by Argentina and Chile, who want to have access to both oceans. The local populations are violent. Also, ima imagine that, and, and I, I know I'm opening my mouth maybe way too much, but the Mapuches resisted the invasions of not only the Spanish Empire hundreds of years ago, but they also resisted the invasion of, invasion of the Inca Empire. So we're talking about a civilization that for hundreds of years stayed untouched by any power. Brushed. The U.S. 1895 Cuba, is it uh, Spanish America? Yeah. This one was also pretty bad. Which now wants to implement an international policy, sees an opportunity to extend its influence. They intervene militarily against Spain and win. The independence of Cuba is confirmed, and the last Spanish colonies in America and the Pacific come under U.S. control. In Colombia, a French company begins the construction of a canal that will link the two oceans. This interests the United States because it will considerably shorten the maritime route between its two coasts. The country buys the project, but the Colombian Congress opposes it. Annoyed, the United States sends warships while separatists for a friendly piece of independence of Panama. In a few days, the United States recognizes the new country. In exchange, it obtains a strip of land in <laughs> perpetuity for the construction and Sneaky. operation of the Panama Canal. But the Panamanians quickly contest this treaty. Canada. During nice. World we don't hear a lot about the Canada. European colonies are heavily involved. This is particularly true of Canada, which carries out a major war effort on behalf of the United Kingdom. At the end of the war, Canada asks for greater autonomy. In 1926, equality with the United Kingdom is proclaimed, followed by its sovereignty being recognized in 1931, although the country remains linked to the British crown by becoming a member of the Commonwealth. In the south of the continent, conflicts persist over the delimitation of borders. In 1932, Bolivia and Paraguay go to war over control of the Chaco, a region mm. where oil has just been discovered and which offers access to the Atlantic Ocean via the Paraguay River. 
Paraguay wins and takes 75% of the territory. Peru and Ecuador also dispute their border. A new war breaks out in 1941 and turns to the advantage of Peru, which takes over a large part of the territory Sad located Ecuador. in the Amazon. At the end of World War II, the United Kingdom and France are weakened while the first colonies claim their independence. In 1946, several French colonies in America become French departments. The United Kingdom finally grants independence to the colonies that request it, only if the new governments are not communist, as the world is now in the midst of the Cold War. The new states are offered the option of joining the Commonwealth, in 1962, Jamaica and the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago are the first to declare independence. Most of the British colonies, as well as Suriname, become independent in turn. However, some islands remain under British control. Oh. This is the case for the Falklands, called the Malvinas in Argentina, which are a gateway to the Antarctic continent. The islands are claimed by Argentina, which attempts a military invasion in 1982. I really want to hear what's your opinion, guys. I know the opinion of the British and I know the opinion of the Argentinians. But, for example, if you're American, what do you think? If you are uh, non-British Europe European, like, what do you think? I know what I think, and I've said it multiple times in this channel, but I think the islands belong to Argentina. However, you know, the people on the island have voted where they, which country do they want to be a part of, and they've said the UK. So there's not much you can do there. You know, international law should be respected. It's complicated, really. It's not New easy. War breaks out. The United Kingdom repels the Kicks offensive ass. and wins. Yeah. It embarrasses the Argentinian Today, military. France, the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands still control some American territories, mainly in the Caribbean. According to the United Nations, some British and U.S. territories are still non-self-governing. In Puerto Rico, the inhabitants enjoy U.S. citizenship, but don't have the right to vote That's in nice. presidential elections. Panama regains full sovereignty over its canal on December 31st, 1999. Throughout the continent, disputes persist over the exact delimitation of land borders. Oh, while Belize, some really? Indigenous communities also clamor to assert their rights. If the subject is still very sensitive for European countries, the Catholic Church has presented on several occasions since 1992 its official apology for the abuses perpetrated during the evangelization and colonization of America. Today, after many waves of immigration, America is probably the continent with the greatest ethnic diversity. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. By the way, did you know that the Mexican president, the one that we have now, like he wanted the Spanish government? I'm, I'm going to change the view on this one for a moment. He asked the Spanish government for an apology. Not only the Spanish government, but the current Spanish monarchy. Which, I mean, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of bullshit as well. Like, what are they going to apologize for? Well, I mean, it, it was so long ago that it's not really relevant anymore. People don't really care like he thinks. But hey, you know, I guess he's right.